Hello, my name is Andrew Perkins. In today's video, I wanted to start a new Ruby on Rails video series covering Rails 8. I'd like to start at the very basics and work our way up to some of the more intricate aspects of working with the Rails framework and everything new that Rails 8 has to offer. In today's video, we'll start at the very beginning with going over how to install Ruby and Rails and getting you up and running as quickly as possible. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do is go to our browser and let's go to rubyonrails.org. At the top, we can go to docs and then in the middle here we have this download Rails section for installation. And here you can find installation instructions for various operating systems. So we have instructions for Mac, Ubuntu, and Windows. I use a Mac, so that's what I'll be showing you here. But if you don't have a Mac, you can follow Ubuntu for Linux or Windows. Uh, it's pretty easy to follow along. Just click on your section. For instance, if you're doing Windows, click on Windows and just follow these instructions. It's pretty simple. Let's go back up to the Mac section, as I did use part of this to install my Ruby and Rails. So let's switch to our terminal here. We move this out of the way. So the first thing you need to do is install Homebrew. Now I'm not going to show you how to install Homebrew. I already have it installed. Basically you just need to run these first couple commands here to install it. Once you have Homebrew installed, you can verify it by typing the word brew in your terminal. And you should get these list of commands or example usages here if it's installed correctly. Next, we need to install Ruby. I'm going to use Homebrew to do that. I'm actually going to install it using rbenv, that's R-B-E-N-V, which just allows me to manage different versions of Ruby. So I'm going to run the following command, brew install rbenv, R-B-E-N-V, and I'm also going to install Ruby build. So you can see for me it's saying that it's already installed and there's nothing really to install here, but on yours it should install rbenv and Ruby build for you. Next you need to initialize rbenv. You just run rbenv init. On mine it's saying that it's skipping it because it's already initialized. Next, we need to insert a line of code into our zshrc file so that our benv works properly. To do so, we're going to write echo, single quote, eval, space, double quote, dollar sign, open a parenthesis, our benv, init, hyphen, close the parenthesis, close the double quote, close the single quote, two greater signs, tilde, slash, dot, zshrc. And that will stick that line of code into your dot zshrc file. I'm not going to run this command as I've already done it. I don't want to stick another line of code in there. So once you run that, you should then be able to run the rehash command. Now you may need to close your terminal, quit it, and then reopen it. And now we should have access to the rbenv command. Now we're going to install Ruby. Now I use Ruby 3.3.5, so we can run rbenv install 3.3.5. You can see on my computer it's already installed, but on yours it should install it for you. And then to select this version of Ruby, we run rbenv global 3.3.5. Now you can see that it already exists for me, so I don't need to do anything further, but for you that should install it and make it global for your computer. Now again, you might need to close it out, your terminal, and quit it, and then reopen your terminal once more, and you should be able to run ruby-v, and you should have ruby 3.3.5 installed. Next, we want to install Ruby on Rails. It's very simple, it's just one line. We write gem install rails. 
Now I already had Rails installed, so it didn't really do much here on my side, but for you it should install Ruby on Rails, the current version. As of right now, I have Rails 8.0.1 installed. Now that we have Ruby and Rails installed, let's create our first Rails application and test it out to make sure it works. So first, in your terminal, you should change directories into whatever directory you'd like to store your projects in. So for me, that's going to be in Sites. Then you can see I have a couple folders here, Projects, Work, and YouTube. So I'll switch into the YouTube folder. And as of right now, there's nothing in there. So here, we'll run the Rails new and then the name of our application. For this video, we're going to name the application Bookstore and hit Enter. And that creates our application, creates a whole bunch of files, and sets it all up for us. Now we should be able to change directories into Bookstore and then we can verify that everything's set up by examining the installation. We can run bin slash rails about. And here we get a bunch of information about our Rails installation. We can see our Rails version, our Ruby version, our Ruby Gems version, Rack version, and some other information about the Rails application. And now we can also start up the server and make sure everything is installed and working properly. So we can run bin slash Rails server. Here you can see it booted up Puma and our application is running on localhost port 3000. So let's visit that real quick. We'll go to localhost port 3000 and there is our Ruby on Rails installation. Now let's do the most obvious next step and that would be to have our app say hello world. The simplest way to do this would be to generate a controller, action, and view. Luckily with Rails, it couldn't be any easier. We can do that just with a single line. Let's open up our terminal again. I'm going to cancel my server by hitting Control C. We will run bin slash rails generate controller. Then we'll name our controller hello world and we'll give it an action of index. So here we can see that that command generated a couple of files for us. We have a hello world controller. We have a route for our hello world controller and our index action. We have our index.html.erb view file. We have a test file and we got a helper file as well. Now let's open up our application into our favorite text editor. I use VS Code, so I'm going to run code and a dot, and that'll open the uh, current directory into VS Code for me. So we'll open this up, close out the welcome. Now here's the directory structure of our application. We will be spending most of our time inside of the app folder, some time inside of config for the configuration files, a little bit of time inside of the DB folder, which is where our migrations will go, and we'll go over the rest of these folders and files as they come up and as we need them. For now, try not to be too overwhelmed by all of the files and folders. Most of this stuff just handles itself and you don't need to be concerned with it all. Uh, just take it one step at a time and eventually all of this should make sense for you. So let's just focus on the app folder for right now. So in the terminal, we created a hello world controller. We can find that inside of app controllers, hello world underscore controller dot RB. Inside here, you can see that it's just a class called hello world controller. It extends application controller, which gives this file all of its functionality. We have one method called index and this is our index action. You can think of this action as a page. For now it's blank and we don't need to do much with it. We can just leave it blank, but we do need to modify the view file. We can find that under app, views, hello world, 
and here's index.html.erb. In here we have some boilerplate HTML that we can just delete out. In here we'll create an h1 tag and we will just say hello world. So we have our hello world controller, we have our index action which corresponds to an index view file with the h1 HTML element saying hello world. The last part of this is the routes file. We need a route for this in order to route the URL to our controller in action. We can go to config and we'll find our routes.rb file. Now when we created our controller, it created this get hello world slash index route for us. This maps the URL hello world slash index to our hello world controller and our index action and index view. So let's start up the server again. We will run bin slash rails server. Go back to the browser and we can go to localhost port 3000 slash hello world slash index and there we go we get our hello world message in the browser right from our rails application so with that our hello world app is complete and we have finished installing ruby and rails i hope you found this helpful if so please stay tuned for the next part in which we'll learn about the uh, rails console and how to perform crud which is create read update and delete Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.